So welcome back to the last part of today's lecture. So we're going to switch topics a little bit and start talking about linearly independent sets. Now we've actually seen linear independent sets in the special case. If you go back to lecture seven, um, you can go do that right now if you want. We introduced linearly independence in Rn. Now, one of the things we've been talking about in vector spaces is that a vector space generalizes the properties of Rn. So we would expect that we should be able to generalize the property of linear independence to any vector space. And in fact, that's what the next definition does. And you'll notice that the definition is almost word for word the same as in Rn, except now instead of taking vectors inside of Rn, we're taking vectors inside of our arbitrary vector space. So. An index set of vectors, v1 through vp, in our vector space v is linearly independent if the vector equation c1 times v1 plus c2 v2 up to cp vp equals 0 has only the trivial solution. Has only the trivial solution and remember what that means c1 all of the ci's have to be equal oh, i guess i have a cp have to be equal to zero and if there's a non-trivial solution we would say that the there's a linearly linear dependence relation among the vectors say there is a linear dependence relation among v1 up to vp. Okay, so as I was just saying, this definition here just generalizes exactly the definition that we had in Rn. It, the only, if you were to go back, this v here would just be Rn, and this is exactly how we would define a collection of linearly independent vectors in Rn. So this is the same definition in Rn. So all of those examples of things that were linearly independent in Rn are still linearly independent using this new definition. Right? So in particular, so the standard basis vectors E1 through En are linearly independent. Okay, so that gives us a nice example of things being linearly independent. And just, you know, recall why this is true, because the only solution to this equation is when all the ci's equal zero. Okay. So it would be more interesting to kind of maybe look at a little bit more complicated example, and that's actually what we're going to do, spend the rest of this little part of the video doing. So here I have a vector space P2 consisting of all the polynomials of degree 2 or less, and I have three polynomials, minus 3 plus 4t squared, 5 minus t plus t squared, and 1 plus t plus 3t squared. And what I want to do is I want to show that these vectors are linearly independent. So it's good to just, if you're getting stuck, is just to write out the definition, right? To understand what you have to do, right? So we need to show the only solution to C1 times the first polynomial plus C2 times the second polynomial plus C3 times the last polynomial equals zero is when c1, c2, and c3 equals zero. So this is our goal, to show that if we found three numbers that allowed us to scale each of these polynomials and then add them and we got zero, that means that all of our numbers had to be zero to begin with. So how do we do this? Well, what we're going to do, oh, I moved it too far. What we're gonna do is we're gonna expand out each of these pieces here and see what we get. So we get c1, times minus 3 plus 4t squared plus c2 times 5 minus t plus t squared plus c3 times 1 plus t plus 3t squared. And so what we want to do is now expand this out and collect terms, right? So we would have all of our constant terms would be 3 minus c1 
plus phi c2 plus c3. All the, the coefficient of t would be, well, there's no t here. We would have a minus c2 there, and we have a plus c3 here. And then we collect together all the coefficients of t squared. So we would have 4c1 plus c2 plus 3c3 t squared. And we want this equal to the zero polynomial, which is zero plus zero t plus zero t squared. Okay. So what we're actually getting here is a system of linear equations because we want this guy to be equal to zero. We want this guy to be equal to zero. And we want this guy to be equal to zero. All right. So we actually have a system of linear equations. So we have minus 3, 5, 0, 0, minus 1, 1, 4, 1, 3, C1, C2, C3, equaling to 0, 0, 0. So if we, the, solving the system of linear equations gives us all the ways that we can solve this equation at the beginning, yet setting it equal to 0. And so what we want to know is, do we have a, uh, a trivial solution or do we have a non-trivial solution? Okay. So now if you want to notice something here is that we've actually turned our original problem into a system of linear equations and then we want to try to answer the question. Now, our question is really more about existence. We were just asking, is there one solution or there's an infinite number of solutions? Because we always know we have the trivial solution. So when do you have only one solution? Well, if this matrix is invertible. And why don't we just kind of use some of the stuff that we've learned in this course. And one of the things that we learned is that the determinant of your matrix can tell you whether your matrix is invertible. So let's compute the determinant and I can use my three by three trick, right? So I'm going down this diagonal, that's nine, and then I had to have nine plus 20 plus zero, and then I would have minus zero, uh, minus negative three, and minus zero, and I get a number that's not zero. I don't even really care about what this number is. The point is that this matrix here is an invertible matrix because its determinant is not zero. So let's put some all these pieces together now. We know that the determinant of the coefficient matrix doesn't equal zero. Well, that implies that the coefficient matrix is invertible, which in turn implies that the, the system of linear equation has only the trivial solution, C1, C2, C3 equals zero, but then that implies that our vectors P1, T, P2, T, and P3t are linearly independent. Okay, so this is a good example because we're using lots of different things that we've learned in the course. So we're starting with an arbitrary vector space. We're asking things about being linearly independent. We transform the problem into a system of linear equations, and we use some of our tools in order to check whether it has a trivial solution or not. So to kind of summarize from today's lecture, there are a lot of key ideas. So one of the things that we learned is we learned about a new subspace attached to a matrix, namely the column space. We learned how the null space and the column space are related to linear transformations. And we introduced linearly independence for any vector space. So that's it for today's lecture. And I will see you in lecture 22. Have a great day.